Now to give you an idea now, what happens when Jibreel comes with a revelation to the Prophet ﷺ? Now we know for the Prophet ﷺ, it was very heavy on him, right? I mean, he would sweat even on a bitterly cold day. It was rough on him. His body would become physically heavier. <laughs> I mean, Zayd ibn Thabit says, my leg was under his leg when the Quran came to him one time and I lost feeling in my leg. You know, Rasulullah was sitting on a camel when Surat Al-An'am was revealed to him and the knees of the camel buckled and the Prophet got off as a, as a mercy to that camel. So it was visibly, it was vis visibly rough on the Prophet when revelation came to him that way. But how does the process go? Okay, and this is truly fascinating. We know لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصديعا من خشية الله. Allah says if we were to reveal this Quran onto a mountain, you would have seen that mountain crumble. You would see it shake and crumble out of its awe of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It has to come to the heart of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He has to bear that revelation. But how does this all happen? Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم was asked, how does the revelation come? The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said. That when Allah desires to speak the words of revelation, when Allah wills to speak the words of revelation, He says there is a loud noise through the heavens. And He said it's like chains pulling over Mount Safa. Like, I mean, imagine the severity of chains pulling over a mountain. And He said the angels of the heavens are overtaken by it. They're overtaken by it. And Allah speaks to Jibreel alayhi salam. Now, can you imagine Allah? speaks to Jibreel directly with the revelation. Jibreel actually gets the Qur'an from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He hears the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finishes with the revelation to Jibreel alayhi salam, the angels regain themselves. And as Jibreel starts to descend, the Prophet sallallahu said, the angels surround Jibreel and they say, Mada qala rabbuk? What did your Lord say? And Jibreel says, Al-Haqq, Al-Haqq, wa huwa al-Aliyyul kabir. He's spoken the truth and he is the most high and the most great. The Prophet ﷺ said all of those angels start to say Al-Haqq, Al-Haqq, wa huwa al-Aliyyul Kabir, the truth, the truth. He is the most high and the most great and they start to descend with Jibreel alayhi salam as he brings the revelation down. And in Surat Al-An'am, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned Surat Al-An'am of course came in one shot, over 20 pages in one shot to the Prophet ﷺ. 70,000 angels were escorting Surat Al-An'am, glorifying Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and declaring His praise as it came to the Messenger ﷺ. That's the process of that revelation coming to the Messenger ﷺ. Not only that, dear brothers and sisters, but you know when you recite Quran, that's the, the easiest way to get angels to surround you is to start reading Quran. You know why? Because the angels have not been given the gift of the recitation of the Qur'an. And some of you are like, wait, what? The angels do not recite the Qur'an. يَسْتَمِعُونَ إِلَيْهِ They listen to it. There are only a few angels that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has actually given the gift of the recitation of it. Obviously Jibreel alayhi salam and some angels, but for the most part, the angels, they listen to it. So when you start to recite Qur'an in the Qur'an al-Fajr, كَانَ mashhuda. The angels witness that. The angels surround the people as they recite the Qur'an because they love to hear it since they don't recite it, subhanAllah. So that's how the revelation comes to the Prophet ﷺ. Obviously there are numerous ways as to how Jibreel would teach the Prophet ﷺ. And even subhanAllah, as Jibreel taught the Prophet ﷺ, Al-Ahruf, the multiple ways of recitation, the seven ways of recitation. Why? Because, you know, because the Prophet ﷺ, by reciting those seven ways of recitation, people would enter Islam very quickly because the different dialects were included in the recitation. All of them were divine. How did that happen? The Prophet ﷺ says in the hadith in Abu Dawood that Jibreel came to me and told me, recite the Quran in the recitation that's been given to you. So he said, I started to read. He said, Jibreel was on my right side, Mikael was on my left, left side. Mikael said, Istazidtu, increase him. So Jibreel taught me another recitation. Mikal looked at Jibreel again and said, Istazidtu, increase him. So he taught me another recitation. Mikal said, Istazidtu, increase him. Until he said it seven times and the Prophet was given seven different modes of recitation of the Quran. 
That's how it comes down to the Prophet ﷺ. That's how it was taught to him. And it's truly miraculous and magnificent that the Prophet ﷺ was able to bear that and remember it by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what are some other ways that Jibreel came to the Prophet ﷺ? He did not stop coming to him in his dreams. So just because he was now manifesting himself with revelation, it does not mean that he stopped coming in his dreams. There are some other ways. In his dreams, he'd come to the Prophet ﷺ sometimes with Mikal. So sometimes the Prophet ﷺ saw Jibreel and Mikal together. One time he sees him and Jibreel and Mikal take him and they show him the punishment and the rewards of the grave. So the long hadith of Adab al-Qabr, the punishment of the grave and the rewards of the grave are Jibreel and Mikal pointing out to the Prophet ﷺ what is happening. Then he showed him Al-Jannah, paradise and hellfire. And the Prophet ﷺ was shown his home in paradise. He actually saw his house in paradise. So the Prophet ﷺ said, at that point I said to Jibreel and Mikal, Da'ani atkhulu manzili. Leave me now to enter my house. I don't want to go back. Let me get in now. And Jibreel alayhi salam, he put his, ha his hand on the arm of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi and he said, you still got some time in this world and then you'll enter it inshaAllah. Okay. Another time the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, I saw in my dream Jibreel and Mikal and Mikal said to Jibreel, give him an analogy, give him a method. So Jibreel alayhi salam, he said the analogy of the message or the parable of the message that has been given to you, Ya Rasulullah, is that of a, of, of a king who conquered a land. When the king conquered, conquered that land, he built a house in that land. And then when he built that house, he constructed that house, he spread a table spread with food on it. And he invited whoever wanted to come into that home. Jibreel alayhi salam said, Allah is the king. The land is Islam. The home is Jannah. The food is the food of Al-Jannah. Wa anta ya Muhammad Rasulullah. And you, O Muhammad, are the messenger of Allah. Whoever responds to you has entered into Jannah and will eat whatever they desire of it. So Jibreel and Mikal are explaining to the Prophet ﷺ who he is and actually giving him amthal of what he represents and what his message represents. Other times Jibreel ﷺ came to the Prophet ﷺ with a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his dream. So the Prophet ﷺ saw an image of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Jibreel alayhi salam showed the Prophet ﷺ Aisha for three consecutive nights. And he told the Prophet Sallallahu This is your wife in this world and the next. And Aisha, she used to boast. She used to say, Jibreel proposed on my behalf. Like who else has that distinction? Jibreel came and asked for my hand, right? <laughs> SubhanAllah, Jibreel proposed on her behalf. Sometimes Jibreel just showed him Jannah, random scenes of Jannah. So one time the Prophet Sallallahu said, Jibreel came to me and he took me to a palace in paradise. It was so beautiful that the Prophet Sallallahu was about to go in as he was about to go in, Jibreel said, actually, that's Umar bin Khattab's house. <laughs> so the Prophet ﷺ said, I did not go in because I remembered how jealous of a man Umar is. So I just stayed back. And he narrated the dream the next day and Umar was there and Umar felt bad that Rasulullah was too shy to enter his house in Jannah. Like Umar was over the excitement of having a palace in Jannah. Like, Ya Rasulullah, like, you think I would stop you from coming into my house in Jannah? <laughs> Rasulullah he also says, Atani Jibreel, Jibreel came to me and he took me by my hand and he showed me the gate of my ummah that will enter, or the gate of Jannah that my ummah will enter through. So the Prophet as he's narrating that dream, Abu Bakr starts crying now. Rasulullah said, why are you crying? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I wish I could have been with you to see that. Rasulullah grabbed the hand of Abu Bakr and he said, Ya Abu Bakr, you and I will enter Jannah like this. You're good. It shows you where the Sahaba were as well. They weren't like, what did it look like? What happened here? They were concerned about themselves. They were concerned about their salvation. They were concerned about pleasing Allah and the Messenger So the dreams continued, okay? Now in real life, in what other way did Jibreel come to the Prophet other than revelation? Jibreel you have to understand, taught the Prophet the Sunnah, okay? The Prophet doesn't speak out of empty desire. So Hassan ibn Atiyah radiallahu anhu says, كان جبريل ينزل بالسنة على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فيعلمه إياها كما يعلمه بالقرآن. Jibreel used to come to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and teach him the Sunnah the same way that he used to teach him the Quran. So every hadith that you hear is from Jibreel عليه وسلم teaching the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم as well. So he still teaches him the Sunnah. Not only that, he stands with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. And he even qualifies statements of the Prophet. 
So Abdullah ibn Abi Qatada radiallahu anhu says, before the battle of Badr, the Prophet sallallahu was, was speaking to us. He was giving us a sermon. And we said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, if we go out in Badr and we lose everything, and you know, we die in that situation. Will we be forgiven for all of our sins? The Prophet ﷺ said, Naam, yes. As soon as he said it, he said, Hada Jibreel. This is Jibreel. Yaqulu illa an yakuna alayka dayn. He says, unless you have a debt to pay, you've got to pay your debt first. One time the Prophet ﷺ was with the companions in the masjid. Suddenly he took his shoes off to pray. Now realize the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ was dirt. Don't go walking into some masjid now with your shoes and be like, hey, it's sunnah. It was dirt. Okay, so yeah, they wore their shoes when they prayed. Rasulullah took off his shoes and started to pray. When he finished praying, he, he realized all the Sahaba took their shoes off. So the Prophet said, why did you all take your shoes off? They said, we saw you take your shoes off. So the Prophet said, the only reason I did that is just is because right before the prayer, Jibreel came to me and told me I stepped in something. That he stepped in some najasa, some impurity. So Jibreel is with the Prophet on quite a frequent basis. And even when people ask the Prophet ﷺ questions, Jibreel answers those questions for the Prophet ﷺ rapidly. Not just any questions. Hussein ibn Salam, the chief rabbi in Medina, he comes to the Prophet ﷺ with some questions. When he asked the Prophet ﷺ these questions, the Prophet ﷺ responded, Khabarani bihinna anifan Jibreel. Jibreel just gave me the answers. Which is why Allah tested the Messenger ﷺ with what? In Surah Al-Kahf. To teach him to say, Insha'Allah. When Allah wills, because the Prophet ﷺ became accustomed to getting asked the question, Jibreel gives him the answer. So the Prophet ﷺ was taught that it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.